Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's another gyro. I think this one is called a gyrosphere. And we got the logo and all that kind of stuff right here. There is a uh, connected with only four wires and it's quite heavy and as you can see here it's also really really big so it's made by C. Plath Hamburg Germany and the brand is called Litton Marine Systems and it's a type 4590 the four wires go to this little white connector here and then here under this connector we got some tiny 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 wires see and they go through this little brass coupling and listen it's full of water really full of water what is the point and it says some really funny things here on the top. Before open the gyrosphere container, wait 45 minutes for gyro to stop already then. Uh, I think we need to go outside and empty the water first of all. And is it really water? I don't know. I'm going to find a bucket. So now we're outside. I found a bucket and I figured out this little uh, here. See? And this is the water filling emptying kind of hole and now let's see yeah i took on some rubber gloves because i don't know see it looks like water but i'll just put it there for a little while and then we'll see what kind of water that is really i don't know if you can see this but can you see this line here see what the heck is inside this unit? Why, and why is it full of water? I find this really, really uh, interesting. <laughs> I did some tests on the water and it turns out to be just normal water. So there's no problems whatsoever. I can just open this and uh, I just wiped it nice and clean. And it's a nice metric. So that should be fairly easy. What the heck is going on here? So there's a really nice rubber gasket here and it was super watertight and all that kind of stuff. So what is in here? Oh, there's another inner. Oh, what the, what the heck is going on here? Okay, so it's, this is quite heavy as well. Still got a little bit of water and oh, it looks like it's broken in there, right? Is it supposed to? So, what is the point with this thing? So we got the wires going like that, and then I don't understand. This is not in the middle. See? So there's a bearing in here that's kind of... Aha, this is the problem. See? This bearing in here is broken. It's not supposed to be like that, right? It's supposed to be in the middle. But it's crazy heavy. I can't even... Oh, whoops. Yeah, there's... Oh, look at that. It's hanging in those tiny, tiny little points down there. And obviously the water is going to help it carrying all this weight. And that is how it works. So it's when this is all full of water, this is completely balanced. And then the water also smoothen out everything. And this is, of course, supposed to be on a ship and stabilizing the ship's movements so that the... Um, I don't know. 
Oh, this is the how you. This is how you open it. Yeah. Let's see if we can figure this out, how to open this thing. So we are now inside this unit and I took out this. So this is the rotor. So inside this one, it will contain all sorts of funky rotation things. And it is sort of sealed somehow. And here is this sort of a bearing, but this is just the outer shell. This one only moves very slowly when it's compensation or compensating for outside movements. So what we see here is the bearings and all this is inside water, all right? Look at the thin, thin wires we got right there. And they go to this part here. And there are no electrical connections to this funky sphere of doom. And in here we got something that is insanely heavy and really weird going on. <laughs> and I have something absolutely crazy to show you. I think we got some coils going on inside here, right? So this is the motor is just magnetically connecting. You can you can sort of see this. We got wires or coils in here, right? So it's a um, like a stepper motor or a brushless motor spinning around inside this part, right? But can you see what is in here? So this is the rest of the water. Can you see the little shiny metal parts down there? You know what that is? That is mercury. What the hell is going on here? Now I'm getting a little bit frustrated and uh, confused. Why do we have mercury drops inside the water? Now I'm getting really, really like, what are we, what are we going to do with this thing? Because this can explain why this one is so, so heavy. So there's a mercury leak from this one into the water. So this one is mercury and it is heavy like heck. Hooy, 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 hooy. And this means I cannot open this one because I don't have the right proper tools right here to handle mercury. <laughs> I need to go somewhere else to do that. Oh, how annoying. And it's, I don't know if you can see this in my hand. It is, this sphere here is quite big and insanely heavy. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? Am I a little bit out of my comfort zone? Yeah, that I can tell you because mercury is nasty stuff. I don't think it's actually anything dangerous when it is down in water because then everything is gonna be down there, right? And this amount here, I'm not scared of as well. But And it's a little bit funny. See, see the bearing here? It's just holding this, the other end of this round here, just in a flat part here. And then there's this tip, pointy tip in the other end. So I think there's a perfect balance of the yeah, weight to water. What is going on? Yeah, that is the weirdest intro for one of my videos in a very long time, wouldn't you say? So here is this fantastic gyrosphere, fantastic thingy. And it is a little bit over two kilos. I've been Googling around like crazy and nobody wants to tell me what is inside and what is the science behind this thing. So I am forced to open it and uh, I can feel something is moving 
in there or something like that. There's no electrical wires going in or out of this thing, but I will show you a little thing that I figured out. Look at the metal here and then the painting. Okay, and then we got some little lines of marking and again marking, marking and paint. And if you look at the top, I will carefully rotate it like this. So metal and paint here and then we rotate it over here and again it is exactly the same side, metal and paint. There is a a pretty good explanation for this. And at the bottom of this unit, look at that. Here it is free metal at the very bottom. All right? And here we look at the main part. And uh, I believe this metal cup down here is where this metal here is, right? And you see here, we have a little metal contact right there. And there's another one at the other side right there. So those two metal contacts, they can measure the rotation of this unit. It is that simple. And it is down here, it is supposed to be filled with mercury. So it's touching via mercury, electrical connection, but a completely free moving object. And the rest is full of water for vibration dampening. And then it can, re it can move around completely freely. And it's only standing in the very, very center here on this needle joint. And I still haven't figured out how the inner parts rotates, but it could be a maybe there is other uh, coils going on in here. And you can kind of see what I'm talking about. If you see this the glue here is hiding windings going round and round and round in here. I think it makes a little bit sense now, right? So windings go around here. And if I measure on the, uh, on the connections here, some of them, two of them, they're connected to the sensors and the other two, they're connected to some kilo ohms of inductions around here. So that is how they make stuff rotate. Oh yeah, and you still see a few drops of mercury down there. So my next move is to open this sphere, the gyrosphere, as they call it. So how can I do this without getting hurt or getting into trouble somehow? So here is how I feel we can do this without me getting hurt. I, by the way, cleaned this, so it should be fairly fine. I'll try and break it. don't know if there's any vacuum or water or any funky stuff in here so that is why I will try and break it real careful I hear something cracks a little bit but it looks like I don't know how the heck this is glued together or something like that. It looks like these two parts made quite well. And then it's in here. If I look careful down in this groove, it looks like it's full of epoxy or some stuff like that. See? I think that is the correct.
maybe this is what I want to do all the way around. I'll just stop this clip and make a new one and then we'll see. I'm definitely getting in here and I can see through the hole we got a lot of funky stuff going on in here but it's not super easy and uh, I don't know if you can see this I'm getting a little bit red stuff out of myself here so this is a little bit annoying but the thing is that I need to hold this damn thing without getting cut somehow so I try to do that and then you see I have to grab it real hard and then pull it like this because It's like this. Damn it. It only goes a little millimeter, but soon I think I'll be inside and we can have a look. We are in. So I managed to break this damn thing open. Finally. And that took me a long time and a little bit of blood to come in here. But we are now into the holy grail of gyros. And this is actually a double gyro and uh, I think they spin reverse order or the same or I don't know exactly. Um, it's three phase uh, motors and there's a little capacitor down there, a little yellow capacitor down there. And uh, I just measured the different uh, wires here with an ohmmeter. So uh, we got only one wire coming through that hole and the other wire is the chassis. So chassis here is electrical conducted to this part, and this was the bottom part. Um, remember where the mercury connection was, the floating mercury connection. So that was one of the um, connections to the motors. And remember I talked about the uh, outer uh, part of the circle? being metal uh, conducting and non-conducting. Of course, with the two sliders, either one of them is connected or the other one is connected, you can uh, have different voltages or opposite uh, phases or something like that, right? In this way, control the motors, maybe even control the direction. I don't really understand how you can do that because it's AC. But why would you have two wires connected uh, where it's either one or the other one is connected to the motor systems. Maybe it's for, for spinning one of them or the other one, but they're both connected to this very same point. So um, I kind of, I'm a little bit unsure about that. But so far I can show you a little bit more about how this uh, system here uh, works. So the two motors with a big heavy disc mounted in here um, we got even some numbers and all that kind of see if I do it like that I could probably make the rotor spin a little bit by just touching it like that right so here the rotor spins and see there's a thin thin wire that goes down to the motor via that hole here and the two motors they're connected via this system Pretty neat. And there's a little, there isn't any spring or anything. This is just a little rubber thing so, so they don't hit anything hard. And uh, we got a bearing in here that makes this thing rotate inside the, the cabinet here. But of course, this is only for calibration. So this way you put on a power supply to this piece of metal and to this piece of metal here. And then you do all your calibrations uh, because you can see they put little um, lead weights here and all these different weights for calibration. And also you find a lot more down here and they're probably adjusted real careful for all cool things of balance. And when that is done, then you put on the outer chassis and that is glued using epoxy to this top here and then it's sealed all the way around but here 
it is sealed in such a way there is no electrical uh, connection between the two metal parts. And this is how you give it power, the top part and the bottom part. <laughs> this is the electrical connections to your motors. And that is why you didn't find any wires sticking out of anything here. I think that was uh, definitely a cool thing. Yeah, this thing uh, did uh, leak. We had um, some nasty stuff inside the other lid. So there was no other way. I mean, this one was completely defect. And uh, that is why I had to open it to show you guys how it is uh, made anyway. And I really hope I can spin the motors. But I think I need some sort of AC. And at the moment, I don't even know how many volts or what is the frequency. And uh, I don't know anything at all. So where do we start? Trying to collect the rest of the mercury and there will be some tiny drops uh, left in my water bucket. It also looks a little bit like we've got some oil leak or oil is in the water for some funny reason. So when I remove the water, all those uh, mercury bubbles, they will now gather together like you've seen in the Terminator movie. And it's probably gonna go self-aware in a minute, I don't know. After a little bit of playing around with this and uh, removing all the water, I think I have now all my mercury and I can now carefully suck it up in small bites like this. Ooh, it's acting up real funny, huh? Ooh, yo, 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 yo. That is so funny. After all this playing around, all the mercury I saved was this tiny little bit here. And I mean, this is about the same as you, yeah, find in any of those thermometers you see people throw out all the time. So, but I'm gonna save it like this. I think it's fun. I think there is one last thing to do. And that is of course to try and spin the gyro. Uh, so this is a double a gyro. And uh, as you can see here, we got the two halves two motors like that and they do spin the same way around like this right or the other way around depending on faces and stuff I think but in my case yeah I think they both go this way so I, I don't know anything about voltage or frequency or anything like that I'm just starting with 400, no, I'm actually uh, up to 500 hertz. And that is because there is an annoying sound at exactly 400. They uh, vibrate uh, quite a lot, so you can really hear a lot. And I don't want to hear that. So, so let's try and uh, spin it up a little bit and let's see what happens here. So I'm, of course, monitoring the voltage. So here's my drive. Can you, can you see where it's spinning? So this one goes that way, and the other one, ah, you can't see any. Yes, you can. You can see in the in there. So here at 500 hertz, you don't see that much. It takes, of course, forever uh, for this thing to speed up. Um, you can hear it goes a little bit faster and faster. I give it about 60 watts at the moment. Oops. So now they're spinning a little bit more. You can hear the gear it's spinning. And you can still move them like this because they're not spinning that fast yet. I think I need a lot more voltage or well, my drive frequency is bad or anything like that. Or well, maybe there's just something wrong with the motors. Yeah, I don't, I don't get exactly the result I was uh, hoping for. I was hoping for a very strict response in this direction when I move or try to move this. I should actually not be able to do that, right? Nah, we need more speed. 